In our previous project, we have designed and built a wind turbine using a truck alternator, which as you might have heard are not that much efficient. So the turbine is gone, but if you had noticed the solar panel next to that, you might be wondering where does all that energy goes. So that's our 3 kilowatt solar inverter that was converting all the energy coming from the solar panel to power our tools in our workspace and our home appliances as well. While the rest of the energy goes into the lithium ion battery pack that's currently beneath the inverter, which in case of load shading provides backup to the whole system. The inverter just blew up and the reason is quite obvious. This whole setup is currently a mess and that's what we are going to fix in today's video. So have a sneak peek of the transform setup. Here I would love to thank JLCPCB for making this learning curve possible for all of us. JLCPCB is one of the largest PCB manufacturers around the globe, providing their finest quality services right at our doorstep. We have partnered with JLCPCB for the last three years and there have not been a single glitch in their services, whether it's customized printed circuit boards for our project or their assembly. So don't forget to visit jlcpcb.com to get great deals on your order. The link is in the description below. Now before we start working on the new setup, what we need to do is to undo the previous one, which includes the inverter and the battery pack beneath that. And later we are going to bypass these wires so that we can use them for our new setup. I'm going to explain what these wires are for later on. So stick there as we undo the setup. So our old inverter is done serving us and we are here to get the new one. The difference between the previous one and the new one is a whole lot. So we are going to discuss that once we are going to unbox this inverter. In case you are wondering, that's our warehouse for solar systems and anything related to their installation as we are into their business as well. So if you guys are interested, let us know in the comment section down below and we'll show you one of our solar system installations and give you the tour of the whole setup. Well, it's time to get back to our installation. Now the new setup is going to be installed on this wall that's right across the washing area where we were working earlier. But before we start working here, it's time to get all the wires into the conduit right across this wall. So we have routed three different pair of wires from the rooftop. The first pair of wire is going to have DC supply coming from the solar panel and that's around 300 volt DC at barely 10 ampere of current. Now if you do the math, it sums up to 3 kilowatts of solar power as all the solar panels are connected in series. Now the high voltage supply enables us to mount the inverter to a safe place as we can transmit power to a far longer distance using much thinner wire than what we would have been using if we have connected all the solar panels in parallel. In simple words, more current equal more losses and you can transmit it to a lesser distance. The other two pair of wires are 220 volt AC one of which is single phase supply from the grid while the other one is the load side. Besides the junction box, we have also mounted two power sockets that are later going to be connected directly to the inverter's output and the grid supply, just in case we need to power one of our heavy duty tools like the welding plant or the compressor. We have used two different conduits to prevent inducing AC spikes into the solar panel DC supply. As we have got the wires across the wall, it's time to unbox the inverter. Now that's a high voltage hybrid inverter and it can handle up to 450 volt DC input from the solar panels. 
now this unit has so much to offer but we'll talk about that later so let's hang everything in there to mount everything we have used a square metal tubing not only that provided us with ventilation behind the inverter but it also served as a conduit for wires and saved us drilling a thousand holes into the wall once we have our base ready it was time to rivet our custom made breaker plate right in place now before we jump into the wiring we mounted all the necessary circuit breakers on the din rail now keep that in mind that the three circuit breakers on the right side are for dc current while the rest of them are rated at 220 volt ac right now the wires might seem like a mess but it's quite straightforward at least that's how we wire our systems have we started with the high voltage solar input that goes right into the double pole dc breaker the following pair of wires is our load that we are going to drive and next to that is the single phase supply from the grid the remaining two pair of wires are from the outdoor power outlets that are later going to be directly connected to the inverter and grid supply we then wired the inverter with the respective breaker and for those of you thinking that i'm a superhuman well these wires are not live meaning that they don't have electricity flowing through them right now which makes the whole job shock free and technicians like us last longer later we installed the system bypass switch that will come in handy if the system ever goes down for those of you that are still stuck at what the heck these lots of breakers are doing between the system and the supplies well a breaker is kind of a switch that only allows a limited amount of current to flow across that particular breaker providing overload and short circuit protection usually that current is specified on the breaker which comes in a variety of rating and the number of folds that they can likely offer like the one that i've got over here is rated at 32 amps of current and it's a two pole breaker they ranges from single pole up to a four pole breaker in case of 120 or 220 volt ac the ones that are used for dc supply only comes in two pole variant for the obvious reason so with this class on circuit breakers it's time to head towards the battery pack class now we are going to use the same lithium ion battery pack that i've shown you in the beginning of this video but before we do that we had to redo all the soldering now we are going to have two battery packs in total each of which has seven packs in series which means that we are going to have a nominal voltage of around 24 volt dc from each battery pack for more details about these battery packs check out the link in the description for instructables article compared to the traditional liquid or gel series batteries these lithium ion batteries not only last longer but they are compact in size so it's time to build wall mounted enclosures for these battery packs So as we were installing our external battery packs, uh, the grid has gone down and that background noise that you are currently hearing is our generator running. So finally we have got the system installed and it's time to turn it on so that we get rid of that noisy generator. Now as you can see over here the generator shows the battery pack and uh, it's currently delivering the power to the system once we do the manual changeover. The backbone of the system is the Crown's hybrid solar inverter. It offers 5 kW pure sine wave output along with the built-in high voltage MPPT charger that can peak up to 95% efficiency. Due to the high voltage design, these inverters can operate in grid tight mode to supply the excess power to the grid when our solar generation is on the higher side. You can have 9 of these units connected in parallel that can make up for a 45 kW solar system as well. The downside of a regular grid tight inverter is that they cannot operate if the grid goes down. 
which is an obvious situation here in Pakistan. So Crown has got us covered with this hybrid operation enabling an external battery pack making sure the system is up and running in any circumstances. Besides that, this inverter is user configurable, so each parameter can be programmed depending upon the need of a particular user. Moreover, these units can be monitored wirelessly using a plug-in Wi-Fi device. Last but not the least, all the required safeties are there. Overload, short circuit, over and under voltage and temperature protections are a few to mention. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this transformation and if you are interested for solar system installations and have any queries about them, then don't forget to give us a call.